Hey, what's up, guys? Um, it's Mr. IPOC here. Um, I'm actually coming at you at a different angle today. Um, obviously, if I, I'd have to draw an X and Y graph on the board since we're talking about systems of linear equations, so I didn't want to um, really use the whiteboard um, and, and stand in front of you and try to draw the X, Y. So I actually wanted to do it sitting at my desk with uh, some graph paper. So those, um, I'm not only talking to those students who just need additional help on their homework tonight, but also I have a couple of you that's been out sick this week. So just check out this video. Your homework should be, you know, um, if you've sent a parent to come get it, it should be getting there. So this is the way we're going to work these problems. So let me just give you a brief intro of system of linear equations. So this is this is um, lesson 6-3. Solving systems of linear equations by graphing. So what you're going to have is you're going to have two equations. One equation, two equation. And basically this is the question that I want to know. What can I plug in for x and y into both equations? So the, the x has to be the same for both equations. The y has to be the same for both equations. What x and y number could I plug in there in both equations at the same time simultaneously be balanced? So what number can I put in for x and what number can I put in for y that would make this equation balance? And I'm going to use the same x and same y into this equation to make them balance. So that's the question that I want to know. And the way we're going to solve that is by graphing. Okay. So just to begin number three, this is the homework problem from number three. Lesson 6-3 homework. This is the problem number three. So always make sure that both equations is in the form of slope intercept form, which is y equals mx plus b, where b is going to be the y-intercept and c and c will be, or excuse me, not c, but m is going to be slope. So looking at this problem now, so we have y equals x minus 1. So what would the first thing we're going to do, and I have some steps that I've sent home with many of you, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a graph. I'm just going to draw a standard 6 by 6 by 6 by 6 graph. So I'm going to count over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and I'm going to go down 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I'm going to go over 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I'm going to go to the right 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I'm going to go down 6. 3, and then 4, 5, 6. I'm always going to draw my arrows, label the x and y axis in the origin. Okay, so now I have my graph drawn. I have my graph drawn. And now I just need to begin to identify some things. So looking at the first equation first. So first step is to always draw your graph. So always draw your graph first. Then look at the, at the B spot. The B is negative 1. So the y-intercept, the y-intercept for the first equation is negative 1. So we're going to plot that at negative 1. So for the first equation, B is equal to negative 1. Now after I find y-intercept, I'm going to find the slope and plot it. So the slope in this, well, there's nothing there in front of x, but we know in front of any variable is a 1. So the slope, which is m, is going to be equal to 1 over 1. Okay? So this is also going to be my rise over my run. So I need to go up 1, right 1. So I'm going to go to my line intercept at negative 1. I'm going to go up 1, right 1. So up 1, right 1. Up 1, right 1. Up 1, right 1 up one right one. Now I can do the opposite as well. The opposite of going up one right one would be to go down one left one. So I can do this. Down one left one. And the reason I would do this is is to get um, my line spread out across my graph. So then I'm going to take a straight edge, a protractor, a ruler, something in that area, and I'm going to line these dots up and I'm going to connect them. So this is the line for this equation. And I'm simply going to write y equals x minus 1 for this uh, line because this is the, qu the equation that represents this line. So now I've completed the first one so I can come check mark that. I've, I've completed that. So now I'll go to the second one. First thing I do, I locate the y-intercept. Right here is the y-intercept. So b is equal to 2. So I'll go to the 2 on the y-axis. So up 1, up 2. So 2 is right here. I'm going to plot it. 
So I plotted that. Now I have to look at my slope, which is m. My slope is always before the x. It's one fourth. So I need that means I need to rise one and go right four. Rise one, go right four. So I'll come to the y-intercept, go up one, and then right four. So up one, then right four. One, two, three, four. And as you see, the lines have a common point. So also, I want to do the opposite of that. I want to go down one, left four. So down one, left four. One, two, three, four. So I now have three points for this line. One, two, three. And this, this, this point right here shows a common point with this line. And that's going to be a value here in just a second. So I'm going to plot that line. And I'm going to label this. So I'm going to label it y equals 1 fourth x plus 2. Now this is the question. As I asked you in the, in the early, uh, early in the video, I said what number can I plug what numbers can I plug in for x and y in order to make or x and y simultaneously in order to make both equations balanced. And that number is going to be this intersection where those two lines intersect. Those two lines intersect at we got to figure out the x. The x is 1 2 3 4. So 4 comma and the y is 1, 2, 3. So 4, comma, 3 is where those lines are going to intersect. So the solution for x, so this is the x, this is the y. So if I plug those into those equations, these equations will be balanced. And that's a way to check your work. So your answer for this system of linear equations is going to be 4, comma, 3. Now I want to work one more problem tonight. And that's going to be number 7. Number seven is right down here, um, right here. So seven is 14x plus 18 equals 6y. That's the first equation. The second equation is 3 sevenths y equals x plus 12 over 7. So this is my system of equations. System just basically means, guys, this. Um, it's more than one. So system of linear equation simply means more than one equation that forms a line on the graph. So that's system of linear equations. So don't be intimidated by the word system of linear equations. So first thing I'm always going to do, um, I want to see if these if my two equations are in y equals mx plus b form. As you see, I do not have y equals mx plus b. The x is on the left, the y is on the right. As you see down here, the y is here, but it has a coefficient. So I need to put both of these equations in y equals mx plus b form. So I'm going to start with the first one. 14x plus 18 equals 6y. So I want to put 14x plus 18 equals 6y in this form, y equals mx plus b. So I have to move some numbers around, and we know how to do that, students, through inverse operations. So the first step we're going to do, I'm going to divide everything by 6 in order to get 6, this coefficient of 6, off the y. So what I do to one side, I must do to the other. So I'm going to, I have to divide everything by 6. So the 6 and the 6 cancel. I'm left with y is equal to 18 divided by 6. Well, 6 will go into 18 three times, so positive 3. And then 14x divided by 6. This will not give us a whole number, but it can simplify. So 14 over 6, two numbers will go, or, or the, what one number will go into both of those, and that number is 2. 2 will go into 14 seven times, and 2 will go into 6 three times. So I have 7 thirds x plus 3 equals y. But the, my problem is it still doesn't look in this format of y equals mx plus b. So what I want to do, I need to flip this y over here. 7 thirds x plus 3 is equal to y. Well, that's the same as saying y equals 7 thirds x plus 3. So as you see, up here is the original. So I'm going to write original. And I moved it to slope intercept form. Slope intercept. So the slope intercept of this equation is simply y equals 7 thirds x plus 3. And you may be saying, Mr. Alpock, why am I putting it in slope intercept form? Well, if I was to look at this, I could not determine the y-intercept and slope just by looking at this equation. So I put it in slope intercept form so I can identify the y-intercept and the slope. 
Now I have to work the other one. I have 3 over 7y is equal to x plus 12 over 7, or 12 sevenths. So I have the y in the right place, and I have x, and I have, I have this, um, this constant in the right place. So I just need to get rid of this coefficient of 3 sevenths on the y. So I'm going to do that. Right now it's being multiplied, so the inverse operation of multiplication is division. So I'm going to divide this by 3 sevenths. But what I do to one side, I must do to the other side. So I got to divide x by 3 sevenths, and I have to divide 12 sevenths by 3 sevenths. 3 sevenths and 3 sevenths cancel, giving me y is equal to. So we all know that there's an imaginary 1 there, because 1x is the same as x. So what we're asking ourselves here is 1 divided by 3 sevenths. It may help you to look at this problem like this, 1 divided by 3 sevenths. So then you know you bring the first term down, so you have 1 over 1. You change the sign and you do the reciprocal. So this becomes 7 thirds. So 1 divided by 3 over 7 will become 7 over 3x. Now we have to work this last problem, seven, uh, 12 sevenths divided by 3 sevenths. I'm going to encourage you to do the same thing. Bring it down here and say 12 over 7 divided by 3 over 7. So bring the first one down, change the sign to multiplication, and do the reciprocal. So now I have 12 times 7 and 7 times 3. So when I'm looking at this, I can do some, I could actually cross reduce here because 7 will go into 7 once and once, and then 3 will go into 12 uh, 4 times, and 3 will go into 3 once. So I'm left with 4 over 1, which becomes 4. So this is going to be plus 4. So now I'm going to move this up here to up here because I went from the original to y equals 7 thirds x plus 4. Now, if you it automatically you could possibly notice something about this. They have the same slope with different y-intercepts. So when we look at that, I'm always I'm still going to draw my graph. So I'm going to say I'm going to go over one, two, three, four, five. I'm going to go over five, over five, and down. I'm going to go down. Um, let's go down ten. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm going to draw my x-axis. Let me get this on. Okay, I'm on the camera. So then I'm going to go down ten. One, two, three. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So I have a pretty pretty, uh, pretty big graph here. So I'm going to label everything. I'm going to label my x, I'm going to label my y, my origin. And then from this point, I need to graph. So I got y equals 7 thirds x plus 3. So I have to identify the y-intercept of this line. The y-intercept is positive 3. So I'm going to plot positive 3. So 1, 2, 3. So I got positive 3, but then I need to go up 7 and write 3. So go up 7, write 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and then write 3, 1, 2, 3. So here I have a line. I mean, the opposite of going up 7, write 3, I could go down 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and write 3, 1, 2, 3. So that takes care of that. So my slope or my y-intercept there was three. My slope was seven thirds. Now I need to do the same thing, but with the second equation. So the y-intercept is four. So I'll go up four, one, two, three, four. So I need to plot that at four, and then I need to go up seven, right three. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then right three, one, two, three. And then the same thing, I need to go down 7 and left 3. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, left 3, 1, 2, 3. Now as you see, these lines are pretty close, but I'm going to plot the first line first, which I should have done. So I'm going to plot this. I have a line, and then I'm going to draw my other line connecting those three dots. And as you can see, this actually creates parallel lines. So there is no intersection at all. So when there's no intersection at all, we're going to have an answer 
of no solution. The reason we're going to have an answer of no solution is because there's no x and y coordinate that we can plug in to these equations in order to make both equations balance at the same time. There's no intersection. The lines are parallel, so it's going to be no solution. Guys, I hope this helps you. If you're struggling on your homework tonight, check this out. You can rewind it. You can go through it. Um, this is problem number three and number seven on the homework. I really hope this it helps you. To those of you that are sick, I hope you get to feeling better, and I hope this helps you as well. So have a good night.